okay right this is the valve body disassembled on my work table um, as you can see I've been busy disassembling and cleaning some individual components got all the bolts there um, this is a metal elastic gas uh, gasket between the uh, sort of it's like a paper gasket there's another paper gasket on the other side of this um, and then you've got the low of the side that's the top portion of the valve body because these are the dowels that fit onto the casing that I'll show you in a second um, as I say I've cleaned up all the valve body I've used a combination of air and carb cleaner something that dissipates quickly and doesn't leave a residue behind because this has to be clean really clean um, this is the block that the solenoids over here so we got one two three I'll explain these solenoids in a second because they're all very different um, this is the top this is the lower portion so you your filter goes on this bit and this goes on here like bus and then your solenoids basically all go in the individual slots see there's still remnant of fluid it's uh, very difficult to get hold of. i'll just turn it upside down like that uh, and you've got obviously a gasket um no major issues i've looked through all of this i thought i'd rather split all this down uh, and clean it out so that i know that there's no issues now what i have done is i've taken all the individual valves out um basically you've got this retainer so what you have to do is go in from the other side get um some uh, get a pick and just lift it out but you've got to have your finger on the end because otherwise you can see the spring at the end and it's going to go woof it's just going to go off uh into infinity to be honest with you um so have your finger and then get the spring pull the spring out and then the piston will come out now i have access to a diagram um on a pdf file of how to break all this down it's a it's a transmission repair manual it's american but it's really good and it will show you if you if you take a piston out um i'm sorry a valve out and you're not sure which way it's supposed to go in i've looked at the diagrams to make sure that i'm putting it back in the way it came out sometimes you take it out and you think oh did it come out like that and these things do happen taking photographs is a good way of doing this but taking a photograph while you're trying to grab with a valve is a bit difficult so i've got the manual to refer to um over here is while we're doing this and this is why i'm going to explain this um and i'm going to show you where all these parts come from on the gearbox i didn't do a video of um how we take this whole thing apart but it's very very simple um the, actually this valve body by the way is held on by all these little bolts here and we've got five big bolts that hold this down to the casing but these bolts they go through the other side i believe um yeah they go through the other side so they come up but it's very simple when you put all these together so that first then that will go yeah that will go on top of that and then on top of that um it's quite self-explanatory really you've just got to you've got to talk all the bolts up to nine newton meters um this is the manual valve this goes let me have a look it goes at the end of one of the valve bodies here yeah it goes here okay and basically this will basically stick out at the end okay and that will link to the manual lever which connects to your selector cable this is the shaft by the way this is the shaft that turns the actual manual lever yes um this is a transmission rain sensor and its job is to tell the car what gear um the car is in um if i just click it yeah like this now these very rarely go wrong is an expensive part but unfortunately it seems to be just stuck to the shaft it's kept on by an o-ring but i don't want to force it to be honest with you and secondly if you take that off the shaft potentially you might have to use an aligning tool 
um, because it will be out of alignment but because it's stuck on the shaft and this shaft is held with this pin through that hole onto the manual shaft there's only one way it can go because this goes because this is bolted in these two bolts here okay so when you bolted that in it'll be obvious which side that's supposed to be on so you can't go wrong if you keep that on it's a bit of a faff keeping it on i have to say um it would be better if it could come off but it's one of those things now this here is the servo for two gears two three and four it sits in the car on top of that plate like that and this spring as well okay and basically it faces up in the casing and what happens is it goes through a bore and there's fluid pressure that's applied through that hole there okay see that fluid pressure goes through that hole and it pushes the piston up and it applies in second that applies on a brake band which i'm going to show you well, which i have shown you i suspect if this video comes second of which this possibly isn't um and that applies second and fourth so if you've lost gear second and fourth this could be why you've lost it now the brake bands they can wear out but i mine's done ninety thousand miles and i've looked at the brake band and there's plenty of material left Quite frankly, it's half, it looks like it's halfway through the material. So that's that just gives you an indication that most of these gearboxes, most of these focus automatics are quite low mileage, so you won't have to worry about that. Um, but basically, in third gear, there's um, a, a hole, which I will show you, that pushes down to release the servo for third gear. And then for fourth, it goes through that hole again to push it up against the band and engage the band to get your fourth gear overdrive. So if you've lost second and fourth, this is why. And this is the weakest point of this gearbox, this piston. Now you see this rod here, okay? It can sometimes detach through the center, okay? If it detaches through the center or becomes loose, it will jiggle around. This shaft will jiggle around through the bore and it goes through a sleeve in the bore. That could cause the bore to wear out. It wears the casing out itself. This doesn't wear necessarily, but the casing does on the gearbox. That is a big job. Um, there are reaming tools where you can drill it out and put a new oversized bush in to, to overcome the problem. But I'd rather not it happen in the first place. Now, this isn't the reason I took this open. Now, this is a good piston. There's no sign of any movement. Now, I do have a spare one of these because of how common this is for going. Um, I don't know how much Ford would charge for one of these, but I do know that they are available, um, particularly like uh, in America. It seems to be the place to get all these parts. Um, but that is the main Achilles heel of this car, and you will lose... Second or fourth will find it hard to engage second or fourth. Or really bad um, shifts. Uh, that could be the start of that. Um, we have here two accumulators. This is the other weak point of this gearbox. These accumulators basically are shock absorbers for the shift. So they allow the car to shift a little bit more smoothly now this accumulator is for the park i think it's the no it's the neutral drive um accumulator so when you switch between neutral drive this is what comes into action just to make sure that it doesn't clunk when you go into gear like the old automatics used to back in the day I remember having a, a, a Rover P6 with a Borg Warner free speed and that was clunking as hell. This is a small spring and that basically sits in the big spring and turn it upside down. Doing this on camera. There we go. 
it sits like that, right? It actually, it goes up like that in the car. It sits like that in the car. It goes up into the valve body, and I'll show you where that goes in a bit. That's like that. And this one is yellow on the inside, painted yellow. Well, it was yellow on the outside, but I put some carb clean on it. It wiped the yellow off. But I've kept it on the inside for uh, referencing because this is a much firmer spring. And this accumulator is the first to second shift accumulator. You can imagine first to second being a particularly harsh gear change um, because of the fact that there's so much pressure involved. This takes it out. Now, I've heard of accumulator springs actually snapping, but... I've never heard of them on UK cars, so maybe it's an American thing. Again, I haven't heard of many failures of this over here, but then again, it's not a particularly common gearbox over here. Um, and last but not least, um, this is in a tiny, tiny accumulator that goes in the valve block. Uh, if I can find where it goes, I think it goes, yeah, it goes here. Okay, it goes, so that goes there, yeah. So basically, it would go under here, and it's an accumulator for solenoid C. I think it's particularly for the three to four shift. So I've just give that a bit of a clean out. There was some dirt left in there. There was some dirt in these. There was a surprising amount of dirt in these. And the worst bit of the gearbox, I mean, we had some dirt in the valve bodies in random places, but it was dirty all around here. There was a lot, there was a lot of dirt. I'm not sure why. And when I cleaned all this up with car clean, it definitely showed. But anyway, move on to the solenoids. Get them over. Bring them over here. Oh, God, that's heavy. I'll just put them on there. I don't think it'll mind. Right, these are the solenoids that go in the solenoid pack. Okay. And basically what you have here... Sorry, excuse me, nose is going again. These two solenoids here are the most common for, for packing up. It's a common fault um, on this gearbox, and it's usually sorted very quick. It's just an electrical connector, one bolt, and pop it, pop it out. It's just held in by two O-rings um, on the actual solenoid, and just pop it out of the valve block. Okay, um, these are stop-start solenoids. They're basically on or off. The computer will turn them on or off to either stop the flow of fluid to a certain gear or uh, start the flow to a certain gear. So they're basically on or off. OK, and there is a chart to say which gear they'd be on or off in. This is one of the more expensive sonics. It's still leaking fluid. Um, <clears throat> this is... The line pressure control solenoid. It simply controls the line pressure throughout the entire gearbox, uh, the entire valve body. Um, it is literally controlling the actual pressure itself that all the solenoids receive and that all the gears receive. This is a general line pressure, right? Specifically, it's the job of these to control the flow going to the gears. That's the pressure. So it controls the pressure in the valve body in general. These control the pressure to individual gears. I'm sorry, I think I said it, I can, it controls the pressure to gears. It doesn't, it controls the line pressure in the valve body in general. These control the line pressures going to certain gears. Now these massive Sinoids. I mean, literally, look at the size difference. These are about 200 quid from Ford, and I can see why. They're still leaking fluid, let me know. Um, and that one, oh, let me know. These have been on the bench for two days. I cleaned these up. They leaked two days ago. I cleaned it up again because we're waiting for a new um, drain, drain pan because that one's looking a bit rusty. But anyway... These are what they call pulse width modulation solenoids. And they basically, the computer is varying the current to these solenoids 
the 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 current for these solenoids is very small. It's like 0.1 amps, but it's pulse width modulation, which basically goes in pulses. So it'd be a quick one, or one two, or one two three. That's the um, theory behind pulse width mod modulation. It's the same way your fuel injectors work. They work on pulse width, so the computer will send signals at any particular time to these for them to vary um, the flow and control the pressures to various gears um, they are very complex basically it's a cyanide and it's a valve as well um, built in so that's that and I'm going to put this back over there if I can get it off the mallet there we go um, so that is the um, the internal workings of the gearbox without stripping the planet gear sets and obviously there are other things um, like the planet gear sets um, the only thing really that i can show you is the brake band itself and a couple of bits and pieces to do with the manual mechanism but these are the pieces that often go wrong prematurely um the piston potentially the accumulators just check that the springs are not broken take this i take all the valves out have a look at them inspect the springs make sure none of the springs are broken there are kits there's loads of kits over here and in america which is basically a shift kit so you take all these spring, these uh, shifters out, all the particular valves, and you take the springs out and you replace them with what I suppose are more firmer springs to get better shifts, uh, much more firmer shifts. Because this gearbox <coughs> was definitely designed in mind for soft shifting. That's no good for performance. These are not performance cars. They're soft shifters. Um, so this is the Ford 4F27E. Um, gearbox I will tell you the gearbox started life in 1990 as a Mazda um, I think it's a 4F EAT gearbox and Ford and Mazda collaborated to create this gearbox for the Focus uh, and he later went in the Fiesta as well and I think potentially the C-Max um, but it is for low torque applications it was updated slightly um, for Ford applications, uh, 1998, but not much was changed. It was basically the same gearbox that came out in 1990. Um, very, very, not basic electronic control, but nothing as complicated as what modern cars have. Um, it has an ECU. The ECU, the gearbox control, is from the main ECU, so it's only a... It's probably only a little tiny transmission controller within the ECU itself. The ECU is no bigger than a manual one anyway. So I will show you the undersides of the gearbox uh, in a second to show what I've got. Um, some varying knowledge here. <laughs> 